Hi everyone, hope your day is good. My name is Rudare and I will be taking us on a journey uh, looking at conference. A conference is a valuable uh, digital transformation tool that helps teams to collaborate and engage. And so today uh, I will be taking us from scratch uh, looking at what is conference and uh, how conference is being used in project management. So basically we'll be looking uh, at the following areas. We'll be looking at uh, the basic introduction to conference. We'll be looking at uh, uh, an overview of conference. We'll be looking at uh, the use of conference as a collaboration tool for projects and documentation, uh, concept of spaces, uh, both personal team projects and the knowledge base areas. We'll be looking at um, uh, how we can create, delete, and navigate spaces in conference. We'll be looking at settings, permissions, pages, creating and editing pages, uh, looking at templates, macros, and space and global settings. So these are quite uh, some, some topics we'll be looking at today. So let's, uh, before we go on the journey, let me quickly introduce uh, who am I and what do I represent. So basically, um, my organization is Digital Careers Academy, uh, is a subsidiary of Digital Business Consult. It's an air tech committed to providing digital skills. We provide digital skills training and practical hands-on experience that will equip candidates for high-paying career opportunities. So that's what we do. We train on different tools, we train on different skill sets uh, that will help uh, individuals that want to transition to tech or those that want to change their, their jobs, those that want to seek better paying opportunities, we train on different things that will equip them uh, for these opportunities. So my name is Oludare. I'm Oludare Olorun Femi, a multi-skilled professional. Uh, I'm certified privacy trainer. I'm a digital transformation and agile coach with over 15 years uh, experience, uh, global experience. I provide training support and guidance to organizations and individuals. What I do best is uh, equipping people with skills. I'm very passionate about resource development. Basically, uh, learning new tools, learning new technologies, meeting people while working across cross-functional teams. So basically, those are my areas of expertise. And I'm very, very passionate uh, about technology and how it can help to impact life. So today, like I said, I will be dwelling on conference, taking it from, from ground up. For those that may not have been exposed to what conference is, we will uh, be looking at this together today. So basically, without taking our time, conference is one of the content management tools. It's a tool to manage content, whatever form of content it is, any, any, any documents, any, uh, any content that would be either needed for personal use or for need of a team or will be needed for a business purposes. Con a conference is a platform. It's a tool to manage all this. It has page editors that allow other people to contribute and review live and direct instead of sending emails up and down, two or three people could gather together, either in different location, in wherever continent you are, but they can all collaborate jointly uh, on a live mode. That is, if one of them decide to make uh, an adjustment, it will reflect almost instantly, I mean, it will reflect instantly on the page. So it's live review. You could have different individuals uh, collaborating on the same page, even collaborating on the same document uh, uh, on, on live mode. So that is the tool that can help them to collaborate and manage uh, content. It can be used to either create, you want to create a document, you want to create a page, you want to share that page, you want to manage that page, you want to integrate that page into other things. Probably you want to bring a picture, you want to bring a table, uh, onto a document, or you want to collaborate on content like sharing with others or sharing knowledge, uh, both within and outside of your team. 
Home Friends is very good resource for doing this. It's 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 a web-based wiki, you know, where uh, uh, you don't need to download anything. The moment you have internet, uh, you have internet, you can register your email ad address. And once you register your email address, it's all you are with your email address. That's all you need. And then it's a cloud-based application, so you don't need to download anything. And it is being used by teams and individuals uh, globally. So. Basically, that is what uh, that is what our conference is. Uh, I, I will not want to dwell so much on slides with us, rather because this is a practical hands-on. So we would uh, delve into a practical demonstration uh, this moment. So let me take us straight into uh, a page that we would be looking at. So basically, when you are looking at conference, uh, it's 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 um a tool uh, by, an, uh, by an Austrian uh, Australian uh, software company. It's a tool, uh, a software developed by an Australian uh, company that develops uh, products for developers, um, project managers, and other software development teams. Uh, basically, the company is based in Delaware in the US with global headquarters in Sydney, Australia, and they have uh, their US headquarters in San, San Francisco. So basically, this is an organization that was founded in 2002, and they have uh, over 200,000 customers globally, uh, with um, most recent revenue of over $2.8 billion. This is a massive organization, and they have a network that spreads all, all across the world, and big corporations, big companies, uh, individuals, groups, they use Confluence, they use uh, other tools that they uh, that this company have developed, like Jira, they use all this to enable and facilitate our productivity. So basically, we'll be looking at uh, Confluence uh, in terms of collaboration, in terms of being a collaborative tool. Uh, like I said, it's a content management tool with page, page edition, and it en enables people to contribute live. Okay. So basically, uh, a lot of people, are, from feedback I get from time to time, I realize that individuals uh, they struggle to be able to work collaboratively. You know, a lot of us are used to uh, people sending emails, and so you get to the office, you have tons of emails, emails upon emails, and so you are really wondering if you're working on a project, so many attachments, so many emails, and so it's all over the place, you know, but with this tool called conference, you can be able to collaborate and consolidate all your documents, all the project artifacts in the same place. And so it enables us to be able to create, store, share, distribute documents and project information in such a way that it will help to improve productivity of the team it will bring visibility to what we are all doing because based on permissions members of the team other stakeholders customers clients they can be able to see aspects that we want them to see based on on, on need to know basis okay so let's look at this uh, like i've said areas that we're going to cover uh, would uh, span uh, different aspects we will be looking at um, what is Confluence. We'll be looking at the use of it. So basically, I've explained what Confluence is, that it's a content management uh, uh, platform that helps us to uh, basically share and you can contribute live, you can review documents, you can share, and we will see it now in practical. Okay. The first thing on our agenda is we are looking at how do we how do we use this tool to either distribute information, share information among team members, and so let's take it one after the other so that we take them one after the other. You can see the uh, page I've created here. This is the interface. 
when you are looking at conference, this is the interface. And with conference, you are, are looking at icons that shows you the home, the recent, the spaces, themes, apps, and templates. So this is the interface, and this is your work area. And you can see uh, uh, icons on the left-hand side uh, that will be your pages that you are creating. So let's start with the concept uh, of let's start with the concept of spaces. So for every for every project work, or maybe you want to do uh, a particular as a segment of work, it's important for you to create to have what we call a space. When you are looking at it in confluence, a space just like you will look at the house. The house will be what you can have a lot of content in a house. The house may have different rooms for different people. Maybe you want to have the, 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 the boys' rooms, you want to have the girls' rooms, you want to have visitors' rooms. The same thing when you have a project, you want to create you and your team, you want to create a space for your project. And so that space, as just like a house has items, that space has different subsegments, which are referred to as pages. So the concept of the space, alternatively, you can look at it like maybe you are looking at a filing cabinet. A filing cabinet will have so many drawers. So a space in conference, you can liken it to a filing cabinet. You can liken a space in conference to a filing cabinet. And you know a filing cabinet can have layer one, layer two, layer three. And so in each of the layers, you can have folders, you can have files. So if you are talking of space, if you are talking of space, you say, okay, I want to say this filing cabinet represents my space. And then it has so many cabinets. Or you want to say this filing cabinet, assuming you want to even say it represents my project. And so it has layer one. Layer one could be your first space. Layer two can be your second space. Layer three can be your third space. And so different cabinets with different layers. So each depends on how you want to organize your documents. Either you want to put it on the top layer, you want to put it on the bottom layer, and then you can now put your file, your folders, and inside your folders, you want to have various files. And so that's the same way come Compartmentalization of documents, of pages, of different pages, different layers of information. So it's a project repository. It's a repository that is in the cloud, like we said. You don't need to uh, you don't need to install anything. Either you're on your phone, you're on your laptop, you are on wherever. Uh, you don't need to go to the office to make use of it. It's cloud-based. So it's a project repository, uh, which some others refer to it as a content portal because it houses all your content. You can put so much content into, uh, into Confluence. And so let's go into it. I've explained enough so that you can understand it. And so when you look at the interface here, when you want to create that space that I liken with a filing cabinet, which means the place, which is like a playground where your documents want to reside, where your documents wants to play around and uh, 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 you want to display your documents in that place. And so if you are new to Confluence and you are wondering, how do I get to this place? So usually I would say, you go to, you open a browser, you type atlassian.com. As you have atlassian.com, 
you will see for teams, you see products. If you click on the drop down by products, you go to this either Jira or Confluence, whichever of them, if you pick Jira software, is asking you, what do you want to do? Do you want to have a cloud premium? Start my 30 days trial. At start my 30 days trial. You can scroll down and read uh, some of the information that is here. You can see uh, it has unlimited storage, 24-7 uh, premium support, uh, project archiving, and you can see a lot of information here. But let's go to where we are heading. And so if I say start my free 30-day trial, when I click this, it says, uh, now I've clicked it. 30 day trial. Uh, if you if you come, you can see here it has quite a lot of uh it has quite a lot of things you could unlock. But let me just take us back here. So here in the in the Jira software where we are here, let's just go straight to uh, because I'm already logged on here. I, I reckon it's taking me. So let me let me let me start a an incognito window so that that would uh, help us in case you are new and you are wondering though. Oh, I don't have the same page as you are. So that's why I decide not to use that. Uh, uh, so that I want to take us into a blank new place. So from here now, you can see I just started a brand new a brand new uh, browser, a different browser, so that it's not bringing my existing accounts because uh, at times candidate might say, oh, or people that are new might say, oh, my screen is not the same thing as your screen, and so that's why I decide not to continue with the one I was on, and I decided to say, okay, let's go in here where we could start afresh so when you put adlation.com the next thing you see you see uh jira software and you see conference you see jira software and you see conference so if you if you click on jira software if you click on jira software more often than not it tells you get it free it tells you get it free jira uh um uh, attention Atlassian organization, they are doing a great job supporting uh, millions and millions of people globally with uh, cloud resources that is really uh, very helpful. So we want to say kudos to them. We want to say kudos to Atlassian because this is fantastic. They are making available to people cloud resources, cloud spaces, and cloud facilities that could help to store documents and to process documents in an effective way. So you are on this page, you scroll down, you click on this get, get it free. Now, with this get it free, it says cloud products even work better. So if you are on this page, you see that the Jira software is already selected. What is Jira software? You might be wondering, what is Jira software? Basically, Jira software is a twin product. It's a twin product by Atlassian. Is a twin product by Alation. You have Jira and Confluence and other or and other uh, software that they developed. But we will focus today on Confluence. Jira is basically for project and issue tracking. When you are, are working on a project, maybe you want to develop an application or you want to work on a project, you want everything you need to work on, everything you need to de develop. All those your epics, user stories, uh, and tasks that need to be done, the bugs that you need to uh, uh, resolve and um, work on. You use Jira to track projects and issues. You use it to track projects and issue issues in any project. That is. Anything you need to do, 
anything you need to work on. If I need to develop a website, in order to develop a website, every work, is it designing the page, writing the content, preparing the wireframe, drawing, whatever, every single thing you need to do in order to bring that website to life. As you document it one by one, they are referred to as issues in JIRA. So JIRA is for you to track project issues, to track and monitor for visibility so that your team, they can know, oh, what is the status of this task? What is the status of this user story? When you go on JIRA, you will see what the status is. That's what JIRA is for, to track. It's like a board. It has several types of boards. Depends on the type of project you are working on. If you are working on things that you might say, oh, Scrum board, or maybe you have Kanban board, or you want a project management board, different type of boards that will give you visibility. That's what JIRA is for, to track the progress of the work that is being done. But we are actually focusing on conference today. And so with conference, you see, document collaboration. You want to add context to your project with a single source of truth, which means everybody can go to that same page and draw content from that same page. And everybody has access to it, be it product requirements, be it our release notes, that is when you are delivering an application, you are preparing an application that you want to develop uh, and you are writing, these are the steps that should be taken. These are what the customer should do. This is what anybody needs to do when they want to install this application. Those are release notes or other documentation. You store them in Confluence. So Confluence is like that huge file, huge folder where you keep so many things, both for your personal use, both for the team's use, both for the entire organization, you keep all those things in conference. So it's a cloud-based collaborative uh, tool which you can share with your teams. You can you can you can you can share with customers. You can you can have your personal space. You can have your team space and so many other things. But we're going to get to all those ones one after the other. And so when you are here now, already Jira software is ticked. Uh, it's ticked for you. So you now select conference. Click on select conference. Make sure it's only, this is the only one you select. Don't select the Jira uh, service management because uh, this is not free. This is not free. So only conference, you select only conference and you scroll down. So as you have selected conference, you will see now that you selected conference and also Jira. You selected conference and Jira. Okay, because Jira is already taken, and then you only select conference. If I untick it now, this is how it will be before you selected it. So you select Jira and conference, and then you click next. When you click next, then it comes up like this. You say get started. Get started. You see, that's why I say kudos to Atlassian. They are making this free. They're making it free for up to 10 users. So if you and your friends, you and your um, uh, small team uh, of less than 10, if you want to store your documents in the cloud, you can do that freely for up to 10 users. That's one massive advantage I've seen. I've seen uh, Atlassian, what I've seen them do. It's fantastic. They are really, really to be, to be, to be, to be appreciated for that. And so, the choice is now yours. Do you want to continue with Google? If you want to continue with Google, any account you have signed on to before, it will map it, it will, it will pull it out. Otherwise, if you want to put your work email, put your work email, like I already have, I already have uh, an account with this, but so you might decide to say, okay, let me put my account or diary at um, digital, So let's assume you see it's 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 uh, selected my account here uh, because my company is data business consult. So I put this 
But let's assume I want to use um uh let's assume I want to use uh any other uh email, but in this case, let's assume I decide to use uh this particular email uh for, for this now for myself, okay? So the moment you've put in this, when you put your email, then you click on agree. You click on agree. And it says the email, the verification uh, to my email. So if that is your case, you check the verification. Let, let's, let's, let's say uh, I go into uh, my, I go into my email, just one second uh, to check the verification. Just one second, let me check that. And so is to check the verification just to know where that is. And so on my on my email, I'm checking the email on the phone. And I'm seeing that now. Verify your email from Atlassian. Yes, Oludare, you are nearly there. I, Oludare, to finish setting up your accounts and start using Atlassian products. Confirm we've got the email correct. Verify email. And so I clicked on verify email. So the same thing, you, you verify your email. And so the moment you verify your email, the moment you verify your email, if I go back now, the moment, I verify my email. So the moment you've verified your email, just like I've done now, you can see, because I verified my email, and then the moment I verified my work email, uh, it, it will now bring you to this point where you are going to name your site, which means it wants you to name a, a website, like a site for you to work. So don't forget, like I described it, that conference, will give you opportunity like you are talking of a house that has so many rooms. So this site will represent the entire house where you can now have many rooms and inside of the many rooms, you now have cabinets, drawers, tables, beds, microwave, chairs, anything you want. So. The moment you verify the work email, it will now ask you to put your site. So for the sake of anything you want, let's say uh, I've already created some site before, but let's say uh, for the purpose of this training, I want to say practical, make sure there is no space, practical training one because I have practical training already. And so I say practical training one, you don't need to put space at all and leave it as small letters. So you see, it's now saying practical training one dot atlassian.net, like a web link, just like a domain. It's giving you that subdomain to say, okay, Atlassian.net, what is the name you want to call it? You can call it any name. You call it Manchester United, um, Chelsea, if you like football, Leicester, which is my club, whatever you want to call, it's up to you. You can call it the name of a town, you can call it the name of a car, Jaguar, uh, Range Rover, uh, Mercedes, anything you like. You can call it the name of a T-shirt, whatever you like. It's up to you. Anything you like, you can call it any name. But the important thing is that don't give any space and don't put at, don't just cut a name. In this case now, we said 
Practical 21, it has already given us .net. So when you've done that, the next thing is click on agree. So don't forget the steps we took from that point when we selected Jira, we only ticked conference. We only selected conference. And then it gave us opportunity to enter our email. We enter our email, after entering the email, we confirm the email. That was when I paused to go and confirm my email on my, uh, on my phone. And when I confirmed the email, the next thing is that it brought me up to this place whereby it says, set a password. You set the password, or if you have an account before, you log into that. Uh, if you have forgotten your password, you will do a password reset. And then a moment is now building practical training one. It's starting up that site now. You can see when you get in, explore all the products you are evaluating. Practical, don't forget we selected Jira, which I said is for issue tracking, to track issues and bugs in your projects. When you are having a project, everything that the developers, the team, the Scrum team, the, 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 the programmers, the database administrator, uh, the business analyst, the everything that everybody in that team will work on, they are issues. And so in Jira, you track those issues to track their progress for everybody to have visibility. That is a twin application from Atlassian. We have Confluence and we have Jira, but today we are dealing with Confluence. In another video, we will look at Jira. Okay, so is it Apple set up your Jira? So, because I mean, we, you can skip, you can skip this. Now, when you skip that, now it will present you with a page that says, name, create name for your project. As you can see, as you can see on this page, it says create a name for your project. Let me make this uh, lesser so that we can see on top of it here, because you'll be wondering what is on top. On top of it, it says create a project. You can change these details anytime in your project setting. That is what happens. So we are in Jira now, because when we selected those two things, we selected Jira and we selected Confluence. So it's good for you to select the two of them. We will now move back to Confluence where we uh, intend to go. But here now, you could decide to call it a project name. Maybe I want to call this Manchester United FC. It's up to you. Or probably you want to call it Range Rover FC. Up to you. Anything you like. Okay? Is any name you want to call your project so let's assume we call it for the for the sake of this training. We call it Manchester United FC. Now it's telling us now that you are in Kanban, a Jira software, where you can visualize your project. Don't forget, I explained that the boards, when you hear the word Jira board, it's just like a blackboard that has tickets. Tickets are the various issues that need to be done. So you have these tickets all displayed like wallpaper, just like post-it tickets. So that every developer, every of the team members come around and pick one. This is a task I'm going to do. This is a task I'm going to work on. This is a task I'm going to work on. Work on. And so just call this any name, like we've said, I've called it Manchester United here, and then you click on create. Don't forget, it's Kanban. But today, we are not dealing with Jira. It's just for this exercise. So you can see here, it's already giving me all those tickets that I've talked about, like post-it notes, because I call it Manchester United, as you see, M-U-F. 
Anta United Football Club, and I say create. Okay. Now, when you get here, you can click on skip, skip everything because this is not where we are actually going, but we are setting up a platform for ourselves. That's what brought us here. Now, at this point, you have created a project space for yourself. You've created a project space for yourself. You've called that project Manchester United FC. And it's telling you, do you want to explore or take a tour? Because this is not where we are actually going. Let's say explore by myself. So now, the system has brought us to Jira. Don't forget, Jira software is a twin application by Atlassian. You know, we mentioned it originally that Atlassian is an Australian company. They have two primary software that are globally used by organizations, Confluence and Jira. When we selected the two free tools, we selected Jira and we selected Confluence. Now, by default, it brought us to Jira page. Okay. Now, you might be wondering, but we're talking about Confluence. So what are we doing here? Yes, the two of them are like Sears twins that you can hardly separate. They are interwoven. Confluence and Jira, they are so much interwoven. And so now, but by the time we are here, because this is not actually where we are going, now you see this hamburger on the top left, these nine dots, these nine dots. Click on these nine dots. You will now see our beloved conference. This is where we are now on Jira, and this is where we are going. Note the logo. Conference has that shape that looks like two X inverted. That looks like X slanted on its side. Whereas Jira has the shape that looks like the diamond, the blue diamond shape. So confluence is where we are going. Don't forget, if you follow me up to this point, you have already succeeded in creating both a confluence space and a Jira space for yourself. Okay, but today we are treating confluence. And so click on confluence here. Guys, you click on conference and it will now prepare the way it's prepared the Jira space for us. The way it prepared a Jira space for us, the one we call Manchester United FC, it will not need to prepare a conference space for us as well. Don't forget, like it's like two in one. You buy one, get one free. We have already. Because we selected Jira and Confluence, it has prepared the two spaces for us. And so, say, welcome, Oludare. What best describe the work your team does? If you like, you can, we just want to gather data about it. If you like, maybe what relates to us, let's say software development. Next. But you can skip, so it's not compulsory. Software development. I see. What's the name of your space? You see now, because I put software development, it has called our space software development. But I may not want to call it software development. So it's not compulsory. So I click on the software development. I may decide to delete that. It's up to you. It's your first space. Maybe I want to call it, I want to call it practical training. You know, that was the name we, we chose before. Practical training. You can give space here, there's no problem. Practical training one, because you know, I might decide to call it that space. Or I want to say practical training one demo. Don't forget, that's the name of our first space, practical training one demo, because this is practical training one site. Anything you like, guys. And so, Click next. 
if you want to be inviting teammates, let's assume it's in the office. If you want to invite your teammates, you copy that link. You can copy the link here like this, and then you can share it to your teammates. They will have access to this. Like I said, you don't need to install anything on your computer. No, this is a cloud application. It is based in the cloud. And so, if you like, if there's nobody you are inviting, just click finish. It's not compulsory. If you're not inviting anybody, if you want to invite several teammates, you click on this uh, uh, copy link, and then you can paste it either on their web WhatsApp, on their Slack channel, on whatever channel you want to paste it to, or you want to email it to the person, or you want to invite the person by email, and then you click finish because you don't need to invite anybody. Now, guys, here we are now. You see, this is a blank space. Practical training demo. Our website that we created, you remember, we called it a name. That was Practical Training One. And as you can see it here now, practicaltraining1.atlation.net. So that Practical Training One it automatically gave me the domain, the subdomain of atlation.net. So this is conference. Take note, when I was talking, I said this X inverted is conference, where the one that looks like diamond, blue diamond shaped is, conf, is, is Jira. And so these dots is how you can switch from one to the other, from Jira software to Conference. That is how you can switch. Please take note. You click on this, you can switch. Okay. Now, because we are here now, guys, hmm, what do we do next? So basically, just like mm, what we said in our, just like what we said in our agenda. We have known what conference is. That is a cloud space that enables your team to collaborate and share documents together. It's a content management space where you could use it to share things. It's a project repository. It's a knowledge sharing uh, platform. It's a content portal. All our content, and you're going to see it now. Now, we use it to consolidate our information. We use it to store our project documentation. Now, where do we store the things we want to store? We store them in our space. So have we created a space? Yes, we created a space when we, when, when we started that we call practical training one demo. So let's go there. How do we know? What if I forget the name I call my space? Do I need to start Cramming the name of my space. Apologies, let me take a sip of water. Do I need to start memorizing the name of my space? No. You just come here. You see these icons. Conference, this is like home. Home here. Wherever you are, if you want to get to home, you know, usually if, if the website, even by the time you want to go back to the beginning, that's home. Then recent is where you can see, if you click on the drop down, everything you did recently, you see here, and everything you worked on, you can see, everything created by me. If you have done anything like uh, favorites, You've asterisk anything, you will see it understood. But that's not where we are going. We are going to spaces here, but you're not going to click on spaces. You are going to click on the drop down by spaces here. Click on the drop down by spaces. You can see there are two spaces automatically. One is Oludare space, the other one is practical training one demo. Can you see? We don't need to memorize the name of the space we created. When we started originally, we don't need to memorize that name. It is there for us. And if it is not even there, and you can see they're having this yellow uh, asterisk, which means 
These are space that belong to me that I start, I've turned to my favorite. But let's assume I even forgot the name of that space that we created. There's no, there's no cause for alarm. You just go to view all spaces. View all spaces will list all the spaces that you have access to. It will list them. And when it lists them, if there's anyone that is not having this asterisk, click it to asterisk it, that is to star it. You can see, the moment I untick it, guys, you can see, nothing is there that I've asterisk before. But we need the two because one, this one is my personal space, which is like my personal house, where I can keep beds, table, chair, and different items. The other one is our team space where I can put documentation, I start it. You can start as many things that are things that are like favorites that you have picked. Okay, guys, let's move on. So we want to go to, let's say we want to go to my personal space. You can click it here or click it here, whichever is the same. And you can see these are all, all the spaces that we have under this platform, 21. Now, you see here, we're going to explain all this later, this watching, that is the spaces that I'm watching, that if anything happens, let's assume it's in the office, if James updates anything and I want to be alerted, that's what all this watching is for. And these are spaces that have asterisk as favorite and on and on. So let's go to, let me explain a, cons a, 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 a concept here. On that conference, there are, there is a traditional space. When you create an account, there is a default space. Don't forget any time I mention space, let your mind go to something like an entire house. An entire house. Whenever I mention space, let your mind go to an entire house. There are several rooms. Each of the rooms could represent a page and when you have a room, there are items inside the room. So inside every page, you can have several rooms. I mean, inside every room, you can have several items. The same thing, inside every page, you can have different things. We're going to see it together now. So let's go to my personal one, Uludare, and let's explore it. You see, it says Uludare. It brought my name up here. And now, this will show your own name. Whatever your name is, James, Sarah, you show your own name. And you can see, this is the overview page. Oh, are we to have a blog? If I want to have a blog, you can click on blog. You see here, maybe you want to write a blog, but I'm not writing any blog at the moment. So let's quickly discuss this page we are. When you are on this, your personal space, you can see it's labeled my name. That is your personal house. You can have, let's assume I want to have five rooms in this house. I will just come here. You see pages. If you click on the three dots, uh, if you um, um, click away, sorry, my bad. If you click on the plus, you see it's a, Create a page. You click on that plus, it says create a page. Don't forget we said in every space, space is that what consolidates everything. Every project will have a space. Everything will have a space. Every individual will have a space. Every department will have a space. So I hope you understand the concept of space now. Okay, now, Within every space, there are numerous pages. Within every space, there are numerous pages. Just like a space could represent like a book. You have an entire book and you have pages inside that book. You can use so many examples. You can use a cabinet where you have so many drawers. And inside every drawer, you now have a folder that has sheets of paper. 
So that's the hierarchy that is in confluence. So here now we go on to the pages. We click on to create a page. Now, if I click on this plus, it will create a page. It is the same thing as if I click on the create that is here. As you can see, when my cursor go to this create, you can see a C under it. Let us see A, B, C. This, that is a shortcut. Uh, a, 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 a shortcut that if I want to create, either I go and put my cursor here, or I click create a page here, or alternatively, remember that word C, C for C for uh, for uh, code, C for create, C for Cameroon, C for Colombia. That's it. If I press the C on my keyboard, it's the same impact. It's going to create a page for us. Can you see? I just press that C. You see now? He said, give this page a title. Give, don't forget, I'm under my personal space. You remember when we went to the drop down by spaces and he gave us practice training demo one space and also Oludare Olorun Femi space. So we selected your personal space, okay? And I explained the concept that you can create several pages under your space. So he said, let's give it a title. You see something that comes up here, learn the basic. I always say to people, it's, it's good for you to go through it if you are very new. For instance, it's telling us there are templates. It said, accelerate creation by finding a template that meets your need. So there are templates, we're going to get there. And if you close this, I'm on the right hand side now, this purple, icon that came up. If I close, if I close this and I go here, slash command, it says you can type that slash to open a menu and insert content like tables, macros, and dates. We're going to see all this demonstration in a minute. I'm just showing us this, uh, prop, uh, 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 this pop up that came up. Once you do that slash, it can do a lot of things for you, okay? You close that, you open the one underneath that says tables. Transform your table with formatting option. You can see, we will demonstrate all this. This is just a shortcut. And then images, we can easily bring images and format images. You see, the power of conference is massive, guys. It's massive. Okay, and finally, the layouts. You can add a column to your page or use the floating menu to switch. So this is just this thing that came up. I didn't want to just tell you that, oh, close it. No, that's why I decided to go through it. Now we can close it. We are back to the page we are, and it's telling us that if you need more tutorial, uh, you can always come back to the bottom side here and go for tutorial, okay? Now, don't forget we pressed C on our keyboard and this page opened. This is a page under our space Oludare. Now, it said give it a title. And so, we can call it any title. Any title, it's just a page under my name. Let's assume I want to call it my first page. My first page. Don't forget, this is a page inside my space. Just I say, please give me my own space. Please, I need my space. So Oludare, this is the space for Oludare. Anything you like, you can put under your space, guys. And I call it my first page. Take note of something, guys. When you are typing this, you see the things that are on top here? They are like in Microsoft Word or Excel. They are like in Microsoft Word or Excel. But you can see they are all grayed out. I can't select anything. Why? Because 
I am on the title page. I'm on the title page. The moment I finish this and I press enter, it says, wait, it said, do you know you can add all kinds of cool things to this page? Like a table of contents, dates, roadmap, then type forward slash to open a list of things and add to mention someone's name. We will do all this now in a minute. So I was on this first page, I mean, on this first line, everything is grayed out. So press enter for you to go to the next line. Can you imagine that the moment you go to the next line, everything that was grayed out has now come alive. Let me go back again here. You still see the notice. I mean, see the difference. If I go back to my first page, you see on this title page, everything grades out. Then when I go to the next line, when I press enter to go to the next line, can you see now that my first page, when I go to the next line, so whatever thing you want to type, the type here is my first page in conference. Whatever you want to type, you can see now, those guys are now, I can now select them. Can you see? Because I'm on the second line. Once you are on the header page, they'll be grayed out. But now I now say, here is my first page in conference. Colon. Let's say I want to say, let me now use from this point. Don't forget, recap. We created a space which called the space practice training demo one. Then we created our first page in that space. I went into my personal space, Uludare, and I'm creating this first page in Uludare. Don't forget. Here is my first page in conference. So let's look at all these things. They matter different things, guys. Let's quickly explore them. What does this mean? Nomad text. And with a drop down, editing one, editing two, editing three. What does it mean? What it means basically is that let's assume I want to format this my first page in conference. I'll highlight it. I'll highlight it. I'll highlight it. And I say, let's assume I want to make it editing one. Okay. Let's do different things so that you can see it differently. Let's say I copy it. I copy it, Control C. I do a space. I paste it here. Let's say I paste it in five spaces, in five pages. I mean, I mean five, five um, lines. I want to use it to demonstrate something. Copy it again. Paste. Copy. Paste. Copy. Paste. I paste with Control V. If you are on Windows, Control key and V, you press them together, it will, it will paste. And Control C, Control and C will copy anything, okay? Now, guys, look at this. I'm trying to demonstrate this to us. Here is my first page. Let's assume we want to make it to be the biggest thing. It depends on how you want the character to be big. Here is my first page. Let's assume we leave it at the one. Let's take the second one. Here is my first page. You know, we copy and just pasted it just to show us any text. Let's make this editing two. Can you notice that it is smaller than editing one? On and on like that. And this one, editing three. This one, Editing four. You know, practice is through practice that we become better. Editing five. Can you see that it's becoming big, bigger, biggest? Editing six. Can you see? So if you want to make something small, bigger, biggest, that is the functionality. So I've told us how to use this. Let's go to the next thing. 
The next thing is, assuming I want to make this bold, here is my first page in conference. I want to make it bold. You come here, you click. Can you see now? That's what that one is. For. On and on like that. The next one, I want to make it italics. Come in here. The third one, I highlight it, was here on the line. See? The next one, what is there? Strike through. Assuming like you want to say this one is no longer needed. Can you see now? The other one is underlined. This one is strike through. Then we take the next one. What else is there? Subscript. Subscript is when you are trying to type all those things like, you know, in chemistry. In those days, H2O. Let's say we want to do H2O, H20. That's where you use these guys, subscript. So the H2, the two usually, I like the two, subscript. You see? You see? It brought it down. Let me type the same H2O up here, H20. Let's turn the same two again to the opposite of subscript, superscript. Can you see the two of them? Subscript and superscript. That's the use of that. Okay, depends on what you are trying to do. So that you don't wonder. Oh, if I want to do two raised to power, whatever thing, how do I do it? So that's how you do it, guys. Okay. Now we finish that. We finish with these two features. Here, text alignment. Let's assume we want to take this last one and use it for text alignment. Let's see how it will look. If you click on this, it will center it. Can you see now? If I select the one on top, and I go back here again, instead of center, I select align right. Can you see? It has flushed it to the right margin. So these are the uses of these icons on top. Can you see? We are gradually learning how to use Confluence to prepare documentation based on your needs. We're just experimenting with the features now. And if you are following my video, you would be doing the same thing that I am doing. So that you know, oh, this is how they can indent, this is how they can flush to the right margin, this is how they can leave uh, a line to be centered. Now, We've done that. Let's look here. Colors. What does this do? Assuming I want to take this guy, I want to make it into green. I see. And I want to take this one. I want to make it into red. You don't forget, you highlight it. Whatever you want to do. So we are getting these features one by one now. Now, what do we do next? Let's come down here and type, here are the things, the items to buy in the market. And just type anything, guys. What do you want to buy? You want to buy oranges, buy guava, Buy fish. Come in here. Let's take the first bullet point, bullet list. You click it where you want to start. Can you see? We have our bullet list. Orange, enter, fish, tomato. 
That's how you get numbered items. The moment you, if you keep entering, pressing enter, it will be giving you additional bullet point. But when you don't need anyone any longer, we don't need it anymore, don't type anything, press and enter again. That is, enter twice, it will stop populating with that dots. Enter one more time. Here are the items in the market. Let's say, what is the next one? Next one is numbered list. This one is bullet list. This one is numbered list. Let's try the numbered list. I want you to do the following. Enter. One, I want you to wash the car. So go here, you want numbered item. Click on it. Make sure your cursor is where you want the action to be done. I want you to do the following. Okay, let's just call it watch the car. Two, dry the plates. Three, over the room. Now, we don't want to go to number four. We want to terminate it there. So enter twice. You are getting the logic now, guys. Okay? What is remaining? We will do, we'll talk about indenting. Let's assume you want to indent, indent this paragraph. Let's say you want to indent this. For you to know it is indented, let's type another, this is cool. Let's type something else, okay? Enter. Now, for you to know this one is indented, there must be a place to measure it against. Otherwise, you won't get what it means by indenting. So put your cursor at the beginning here, indent. You can see we've indented it. If I don't want it indented, you click on the outdent like this. Okay, good. Then the next one is this action items. You know, all these are possible because I am in edit mode. Don't forget, I'm in edit mode. To save your work in conference, when you click that E for edit, when you say create a page, it's automatically switched to edit mode. And when it is in edit mode, when you want to save your page, then you will click on publish. Publish is to save. If you finish work without clicking on publish, it will be an unsaved draft. Okay, and you may lose. So it's advisable you save, and to save is to publish. So the next one here is action item. So let's go and look at what action item looks like. Perform the following tasks. Hold on. What is the first task I want to perform? I want you to set the TV. So here, click on action item. Can you see? It brought that action item that somebody can take that I've done this, I've done this, I've done that. That's what they call action item. So you say type your action. What is the action? The action is, and he said you can use that ad to assign someone. So I want to say, set up the TV set and the TV. Who do I want to set up the TV? I want Oludare to set up the TV. And I want Oludare to be alerted about that. So how do I do it? It says, put that ad at the rate of, so you press down your shift key, and you press that art. The moment you press the art, every of your team members that you have shared, that you that has access to this page, their name will come up so that you can select anyone you want. In this case, because I'm the only one to select my name. And so, watch out. You select this. Because you select that now, it will set a notification to me that a task has been given to me to perform. So let's say I enter 
Type another action. Search a bucket of water. Uh, dry the plates. So you can see, we selected numbered items, an uh, action item. So when you don't need it again, press twice. When you don't need it again, press twice. The next one is link. Oh, what's this one for? What am I, what am I, what am I linking? Link means you want to embed a link to your to your text. That doesn't want to say Google is a great source of information. Google is a great source of information. When I want, I want whenever anybody clicks on Google, I want you to take them to Google. That moment you click on the word Google, I want to open Google. So I highlight it now. I go to link. It says search or paste a link. Let me do it again. I light it. Let's assume I open a tab. Go and open a tab as well. Uh, I want, anytime I click that, I want it to bring up, uh, let's say, or let's say Sky News. This Sky News. Sky News. Let's say Sky News. I want to reject all. Okay. Very unfortunate. Oh, tornado kills people uh, in the US. Oh, sorry. Very bad incident. Okay. Now, let's, let's copy this. Let's copy this link. This is a link now. Copy it. Let's go to our page. Let us zoom out to say Sky News rather than Google. Let's say Sky News. Sky News. Sky News, because I went to Sky News. I've copied, don't forget, open a tab, type Sky News, news.sky.com, go back to your tab. I want, whenever anybody clicks Sky News, I want you to go and open Sky News somewhere. That's what link is about. So I light it together, click on link, paste that link that you copied from here, the link you copied from here, paste it here, Control V. Control V. That is, you pasted it now, and it will display. Don't forget, you highlighted Sky News. It will display Sky News. Okay? And insert. Can you notice that Sky News has been turned to blue now? That's the power of link. How did I do it? I went to open Sky News. I highlighted the word Sky News. When I highlighted it like this, I went to click this link. And it gave me this, where I pasted the Sky News that I chose and I inserted. Let's continue, guys. That's what this are for. Now the next one, add image. Let's go back to this as Sky News. 
let's look for any nice image. Let's say I want, I want to put an image of this, or maybe you don't want any political image. Let's say we want to uh, Okay, let's take this picture of Prince Harry. There's one tool I would, I would, there's one tool I would want us to learn if you don't already know it, because it will help you a great deal, guys. That tool is called Snipping Tool. Snipping Tool. It's called snipping tool. And let's see how it is used. When you have snipping tool, let me, let me bring it up. And then, you know, confluence just a second. Let me minimize everything here so that we can see it. So what it does is, are the everyone go to your? I want to show us about this this tool. This tool you see here, this tool here, it's very important tool. But how do you get it? In case you are wondering, go to where you have this window logo click on it and type click on the logo the window logo and type snip snipping you see the moment you type snip snip you see this tool you see this tool right click it and pin to taskbar pin to taskbar let me show us I click it and pin, pin to taskbar. What it means is that it will put that tool at the bottom here permanently so that you can use it as often as possible. And how do they use it? What is it for? You click on it. Let me, let me close what is there because I have something there before. You see it now. You see it because I. You see snipping tool. How did I get it? Let me go over it again. I come here. Click on the window icon. Type SNIP. It will come up with snipping tool. Click on it. Right click. And pin to taskbar. Right click and pin the taskbar so that I could remain permanently there. So what do we want to use it for? Let's assume, instead of this Sky News, let's say we want to say, uh, a Jaguar Jeep, let's say Jaguar Jeep. Let's say we want to look for, is there anything like Jaguar Jeep? Click on image. Wow, yes. Let's assume you like this one. You like this one. Or I like this one, whichever. And I want it, or let's say this red one, and I want it in my conference page. You go to this stepping tool that we just brought up here. Make sure your it's it's under image or picture like this. You click on new. When you click on new, it will freeze your screen. 
temporarily. You can see it has frozen my screen temporarily now. Then you press down your mouse pad on your laptop. Press down your mouse pad and click the area. The advantage of it is that instead of having print screen that was Take all your entire screen, what you don't even need. Click, press down, when you click on snipping tool, like this. Click on new, it will freeze your screen. Then, press your um, laptop mouse pad to highlight the area you want. Now it has copied this red car. Go to our conference to add an image. To add an image, you know we have snipped it now. I cannot do Control V. You see now it has brought the image of the car. I did Control V. What if I don't want to, what if this image is already in my system before? Not that I'm just snipping it from the internet. Let's assume we go back to that image. Let's go for another image so that it can be, it can be distinct. We right click this car, the ash color one. Right click, save image as. You save image as car, let's say car, uh, ash color, ash color. You see, it has downloaded a JPEG, a picture image. Let's assume I want another thing, another one. Let's say we, we want to take this blue one by the sea. Right click, save image as blue car. Don't forget, note where you are saving it. I'm saving it in downloads. I'm saving it in downloads and click on save. So I have two pictures that are downloaded now. Now let's go back to our conference. That is in case the image you want to use is inside your system already. That's the other way I'm taking us into. You come in here, you go and click on this image signal. You click on that image signal. Click on that image signal, guys. When you click on the image, you say add an image, or edit a file. Add an image or edit a file. And then it opens my download folder. Whatever folder you want to go to is up to you. Click on the first one, Ash Color Car, open. You see now, that's the second way to add an image. The other one we use, Snipping tool, copy and paste. But this one, assuming the image is in your system, we went into the system. Let's do another one. Let's do the blue one. You see, add an image, video, or file. And I go and I pick the blue car by the C and I open. You see now, guys. Fantastic. So, see all the activities we are doing from here. And here now, we've done this, add an image. What of this guy mention? Let's try the mention. Mention, that is the one you press the at, and it will display all the names of your teammates that are on conference with you at Oludare. With this, it will send a notification to Oludare. Now, the next one, emoji, like, oh, great. 
press emoji. What emoji do you want? Uh, happy face. This is grinning face. This is smacky face. Whichever. This one, you see there. You want another emoji? Maybe clap. Yeah. Maybe another one. Uh, let me see. Dance. Yeah. Dance is there. Man dancing. You see, any emoji you want. That's if you want to add an emoji. Enter again. What's the next one? Oh, this is the fantastic one. Table. Now type how to add a table. Let's look at it, guys. Enter. This is a very fantastic feature in Confluence. How do you add a table? The moment you make sure your cursor is where you want to add that table. And now, the moment I click on this now, guys. Wow. Immediately I click on it, the table came up. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. And so, how to add a table? You see, it depends on how many column table do you want. If it is two columns, but it has given me three, how do I do it? If you click on the downward arrow by ear, you can see, do I want to delete a column? It will, I like that column you want to delete. Or do I want to delete a row? Or do I want to change the cell color? See. See. Said cell background, see. Or do I want to delete this last column? You press it downward and you delete column. I see that from three now to two columns. What if I want to turn it to three columns again? Press on this, insert column to the right. That become three columns again. What if I want more rows? Two ways you can do. For instance, you come to the last row and you press tab. You know, the indent, which is for tab, to, to, to move in tab. The in the indent, you see, I'm pressing it now. You can see it's increasing. I'm pressing the tab. What you use to normally move in indent on your keyboard, the tab on the extreme left, on, on, on top of caps lock. That's what I'm pressing now. And now, assuming there are too many, and I want to delete some rows, click on the downward arrow, and delete row. Do again, downward arrow, delete row. Do again, downward arrow, delete row. Practice this so that you can be able to master this particular one. Fantastic. Now, if you click on the edge, you will notice that everything will become selected if you click on the edge you can decide to if it is something that is going to be very wide information that is very wide you can see when you highlight everything at the edge and it's selected like this if you click on this you see now it goes wide as with the information you need there is a lot it will, it will be the width of your paper. Now, again, what do we need? Don't forget we have not pressed publish since we have been working. All the things we have done, we have not pressed publish. Okay? Now, let's press publish at this point. So that we don't lose all we have worked on for the past 10, 15 minutes. You can scroll and see your handwork. Wow, wow, from scratch. See what we delivered, what we produced from scratch. Wow, give yourself a thumbs up. Be the first to act, to react. Give yourself a thumbs up, good. Now, 
This is a page. Don't forget to say my first page. If I go to the top and I realize, ah, I want to edit this page, then click on the pencil. It will bring that page to edit mode. When it is in edit mode now, look at it. Eh? We add a table. Then here, eh, layout. Let's try and see what does layout do. Scroll to the very end. Put your cursor where you want it to be. Enter. I like it. Sorry. I put my cursor after this guy here because this is wide. Let me reduce it. I mean, let me bring it back in. I want to enter a row and I, I, I move my cursor down, 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 down to get past that table. I want to create two spaces. Now, see this layout. Press it where your cursor is. You can see what it just did. It just created two. And in case, if I don't want these two a column, a columnar layout, if I want a three columnar one, see. Assume I want to have something like this name, email, location. It's up to me. Whatever thing you want. If you want a right sided bar, if you want two columns, if you want the left one to be bigger, vice versa. If you want it to be three columnar sidebar, so whatever you like. And if I want to copy it, say copy. And if I get here and I do control V, see it has duplicated it for me. And if I want to delete it, when I click on remove here, it has removed it. So practice your hand on all this. Now, one more thing. Okay. Look, we've done this now. So you, you see, we practice with all this so that you know their functionalities. They're all very useful. Because when you are working on a project, there are times you might need a table. There are times you might need an image. There are times you might need this action items. There are times you might need numbered items. And there are times you might need these bullet points. And there are times you might need colored, large, tiny, and different things. That's why we experimented with all this. Now, at the downward here, you say insert. Insert what? Before we go in there, you know there was a time he was telling us to press an asterisk. Let's try and demonstrate it here. Press the asterisk. OK? What does it mean? When I press the forward slash, can you see what it brought up? Just by pressing the forward slash. Just by pressing the forward slash. See, do you want an action item? If I click on action item, you see, it has given me action item. Watch the car. Dry the clothes. And when I don't want it again, I enter. I press if forward slash again. What do I want? Add an image or mention somebody, emoji. You can see all different things. You can explore different things. <clears throat> Insert a table. 
different things. All those things we've played are uh, with earlier. Even a chart, display a chart. It is a pie. Display a chart. What type of chart? Let us zoom. This is our table. Let us zoom. We have name. And amount. Or let's say item and amount. Item and amount. Orange. We are selling. Orange, we are selling television. Let's say we are selling uh, musical instruments. And we are selling TV. And let's say we are selling cars. Let's say amount that we sold, 50,000, I mean 500,000. Television. Let's say 350,000 or 3.5 million, the numbers we sold. Cars, 60 million or 60,000. Let's assume these are the things we sold. Let's delete this third column, for instance. We don't need it. Let's delete. Downward arrow, delete column. So we, we add this table. Let's color this one as well so that it can look unique. Color the background, let's say we pick this. Now, what is the meaning of this? Do you know, if you even you select, I mean, sorry, come to the edge, come to the edge, select everything. We don't need this last, last column, so let's delete it. This last column, we don't need little row. I mean, this last row. So we now add this. What does this mean, guys? What does this mean? Do I need other column? Or do I need numbered column? You can see it has numbered my column. That's what this drop down is for. Okay? Let's say I don't need row. I mean, I need either row, I mean. But I don't need either column. Whatever. If I need number column, an either row. So whatever thing you need out of it. But where I'm going is, there's this, when you click on the, on the old thing like this, there's this chart. What does it mean? Let's play our hand around it. Let's give it space here so that we can see something, guys. Come back here. Select your table. Select your table. Click on this insert chart. Wow. Guys, scroll down a bit. See a chart so we can see that our musical instruments sold most and followed by television and car. You can use this for your senior stakeholder to give them a graphical representation of what you are trying to say. Let's assume I don't like this chart. I can change the chart option. To what? You say bar. Let's say I want line. Or let's say I want pie chart. Hmm. <laughs> And as it is here like this, guys, if I'm changing the source of my data, if I'm changing the source of my data, musical instrument, we just realize it's not 
50 million. Let's assume we realize we made a mistake. One extra zero was a mistake. Let me minimize my screen so that you can see it here. So we realize that one extra zero is the mistake, and I backspace. See what will happen to my charts below. You know, my musical instrument is the blue big one. Let me close this one at the bottom as well so that you can ask me. You can see musical instrument, the big blue one. Oh, it's 50 million. I mean, it's 5 million. So assuming I realize that, ah, no, it's not 5 million, it's 500,000. One error of an extra space. I want to backspace, see what will happen to my chart. See what will happen to the blue one. Can you see straight away? Instantly, it reflects to what you have in your original data. Don't forget, it was the data that created this table, I mean, this chart. If the same thing, I realized that the television was not 3.5, it's 350,000. I want to delete one zero, see what happens. And you see, so 500,000, 350,000, and 600,000. You can see. And if I needed to, you say untitled chart. You can click on the untitled, the untitled chart is a chart option. You click on chart option, whatever thing you want. You can adjust things there or alternatively, come in here. Select the table again. This chart option comes here. You see now, I inserted another based on the same table. Can you see? I can use it to communicate to a stakeholder. And I have images inserted. I have different things are performed. And then you can save. I hope you are getting value from what we are doing. This is what we do most in our organization. We support your learning. We teach you skills. And from time to time, we run various courses, various courses that could help us to develop our digital skills. That's what we do in Data Careers Academy. If you look at it here, in this is what we do. If you look at our website here, you see various things that we do to promote learning. You see, we've got data portfolio and privacy consultancy. We've got a skills academy that trains people. We've got product simulation training. We've got product innovation and development. All these skills that we're talking about, Conference Jira, our candidates, they use them to develop applications, to develop software type of things, to acquire this type of skills that will help them to get high paying jobs. I'm just mentioning that all these things, and then we provide career mentoring services and also privacy consultancy. These are all the things we do. And you can see our list of programs here and our work experience program where candidates who we have trained in a lot of these courses, they gain work experience so that they can be able to get valuable high paying jobs in the society. Okay. Let's go back here. So that's just one page that we have. That's just one page, guys. That's just one page. Now, let's create another page. You know how we created this page was that we entered 
E for uh I mean we when you click on when you look at this right here, you can see that C, C for Congo, C for Cameroon. That was the C we just pressed that created my first page. Let's create our second page. But let's use another approach. Let's click, click on this create. Click on this create. It's the same thing as if we click on that C for Cameroon. Now, it says we need to give it a title. Now, before we give this a title, guys, there is one other feature I want to explain to us, and that is the feature of templates. The feature of templates. Templates help you so that you don't start something from scratch. So that whatever thing you want to do, it has given you a level where you can start somewhere. For instance, let me let me say I want to have a 90 day plan. You can see it's offering me, when you put your cursor on it, it will show you the sample. Oh, 90 day plan. An employee, the employee name, the guiding thoughts, meet your team, your first week, your 90 day milestone. If that is what, let's assume you are working in HR or, and, or you are a new staff and your boss says, create a 90 day plan. If that is what you want, or do you want five wise analysis? Maybe you are a business analyst, and you are analyzing a scenario, you want to know why, 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 the five whys. Or do you want to perform a retrospective, like a scrum master? A retrospective, which is one of the ceremonies in scrum. I'm a certified scrum master. I'm a certified agile trainer. I train scrum masters. I train on different digital skills. And I'm a privacy trainer. I train on information privacy. I'm passionate about knowledge and equipping people with knowledge. So I cover different terrains because I've got wide ranging experience in the past. I've worked in banks, I've worked in uh, software organizations, I've worked in different areas and I'm a, I'm a certified teacher. I train, I teach in a way that people can communicate and understand what I'm passing across to them. So I'm very passionate, that's, that's my passion. Okay. So basically, uh, in case you are wondering, uh, what I do, this is what I enjoy doing. I love training and equipping people with knowledge. I enjoy it so much. It gives me, it gives me a great joy when I mentor people for jobs, I coach people for jobs, I train people for jobs. And so when people, uh, candidates say, oh, guess what? I've gotten a new job. I'm so excited. Why? Because I know the life of that person has been transformed. The family will enjoy the dividend of that job. And so it gives me a great joy that I've added value to somebody, I've impacted somebody's life. So that's that's what I do. And so I'm very passionate in what I'm teaching, what I'm coaching you on or training you on. And I want, if you can give time to follow gradually, you see that these tools, once you know how to use them, you will shine in any organization you go. Okay. So let's assume I'm a scrum master. Retrospective is the ceremony they perform after sprint review. After the scrum team has showcased what they have delivered during the sprint, which is a cycle of work. When they showcase it to the stakeholders, to the users, to the customers, 
And so they want to now go and look at how did we perform? How was our relationship? The tools we used, our processes. How did we even interact with ourselves? Did it affect the work we did last time? Are some of our members fighting themselves? Are they not interacting as they should? These are the things that the Scrum team uh, discuss and act on during the retrospective. So let's assume we're a Scrum team and we want to have a retrospective where the team name, the team members, the date, the period, the milestone, what do we love doing, list out what we love about our work, what we hope to be able to do, what we dislike to do, and what we have learned in this period. That's what they call the 4L retrospective. And what is the, so when you are in retrospective, it's not just about what did we do well, what did we not do well, this and that. It's also about what should we be doing? And then you have the action plan. The action plan will now tell you in order for us to be interacting well, we need to learn to let go. We need to learn to respect each other. So that will now be our action plan. And then we will have due dates to whatever thing we need to do, or maybe some of our team members need to attend for that training or something like that. So let's assume for the purpose of this training, we choose this. Let's assume. We want the 4L. You click on it. You know it was displaying what it represents, but now we have clicked on it. The moment you clicked on it, don't forget that's the beauty of templates. The moment you click on it, you see it straight away on our page. That page that we clicked create, that page is now retrospective. So give it a title. Same retrospective. Team retrospective. Don't forget, when did we create all these things? We did not. We only selected a ready made. It's just like you pre order lunch. You didn't cook it, you pre order already cooked. That's the same thing with templates. Template is already prepared for you. And so when you've taken that now, publish. So we've created our second page. He said, Onodare has just, can you see now? Second page. But ah, the page seems to be under my first page. Why? The reason is that it is where your cursor is. Wherever you place your cursor, when you want to create, that's where it will go and put this. So it's a very important lesson. Please take note of this. It's a very important lesson. So if I don't want it to be under my first page, I can drag it out. I drag it out. Can you see now the two of them are now equivalent? One is not under the other. Because I don't want it to be under the other. Let me undo so that you can see what I did. You see it here? If it is like this, nobody can see that retrospective because it is cascaded under my first page. And you open it up here. I don't want it to be cascaded under it. I want the two of them to be equivalent, not one under the other. And so what I do, I hold on to this, press down my mouse pad and drag this out. When you drag it out, you see the two of them are now both highlighted. Okay. So one more thing we'll do before we round up this uh, aspect. Let's create another thing. But before we create it, let's go to that templates. Everyone click on templates so that we can see the templates we are talking about, what do they even look like? There's a lot you can learn in conference that can help you to be more efficient, that can help you to be more productive. Okay. So we click on templates. Under templates, there are, see, 129 templates, 129 templates. Wow. It depends on what you are looking for. 
if you click on the downward arrow here, you see business strategy, 29 templates, design, 12 templates, docs and report, 23 templates, human resources, 17 templates, marketing, 19. If you click on the drop down here, it gives you more productivity, 27 templates, on and on. What do they mean? If I'm trying to look for something under business strategy, click business strategy. You will see these are templates that relate to business strategy. One pager plan, business updates, elevator pitch, on and on. OKR, which is objective key result, MVP ideation, and co, and so on and so. Smart goals. If you click on smart goals now, for instance, you see what it looks like. You know, a goal has to be smart when it is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. So you see, we didn't type this now. This is like the already made food that we pre-order. That's the bundle of templates. So if I say use templates, you see that automatically it will create a page of smart goals for me. You see now, and I can now call it my title. Smart goals, and I publish. Don't forget, always publish. That's my third page. You see now, smart goals. I'm still on templates. Templates are very valuable. Click on template again. Make sure your cursor is on overview. If you want any of these things not to be under each other. Put your cursor under overview. Click on templates again. Click on templates. I want to draw our attention to something. Here, before you are selecting templates, mind you, where do you want that template to go? Do you want it to go under your name or under your team space? Back to that. Remember, we are creating page one, page two, page three now. All our pages are under our space. A space has several pages in it. So, because I'm working under Oludare, but if you click on the downward arrow, you can see the practical training demo one that we created for our team. So let's go there now. I click practical demo instead of Oludare, and I want a template. Like I said, it depends. See, click under all and click the downward here. Do you want a software development template? You can see. If I click on this now, this is AWS architecture diagram. See, I'm not the one that type all this. These are DevOps management, run book. These are templates, guys. Incident communication. How do we handle incidents? The role of the person, the owner of the situation, the responsibilities. Incident communication channels. You see, these are in case they ask you to prepare your new staff and they tell you, oh, you prepare an incident communication document. How do they, how do they prepare incident communication? You just come to your templates and search for that thing. So it's a good practice for you to review all that is available so that you can know, you don't have to rack your brain. When you want to type a new thing, you find out is there a template already for that thing? Is there a template already for that thing? Am I a startup and I want some templates? Daily stand up is another of the agile ceremonies. And how do you have it? The team name, the days of the week, Friday name of our team member, the priorities, the progress, and the problem. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all the five days, 
is a weekly affair on that scrum. Do we want to have an elevator pitch? Whatever you want, you go and look for the templates. You type, because if you don't know what it is there, you can't know what to search for. Are you trying to launch a product? What do you do to launch a product? See, the objective of the product, the market research, the competitive analysis, the success metrics, the target persona. See all the things that it has prepared for us. It has made life easy. This is what we are saying. This is the power of AI, artificial intelligence. It has helped us to gather data from different places, compile it together into an automated template. So when they are saying digital transformation, this is what we're talking about. Innovative ways of working. Instead of racking your brain to say, how do I do this from scratch? Go and look for a template that might fit what you want. Let's say you want to use this one. You just double click it and say, use product launch. And don't forget, I moved to under the team space, not under my name now. And I want to call it, you see now, it's no longer showing my name. It's showing the team space. I want to call it product launch. Our product launch. And I publish. And then you can fill the details. You see, all system has done for us with just clicking on templates. It has made all this available for us. Can you imagine? Even with a road, uh, a, a, a product release roadmap. And see. Okay, don't forget, this is the space we created for our team. If you go back to spaces, guys, and click on create space, it will give you different options of spaces. Is it a blank space you want to create? Is it a team space you want to create? Is it a documentation space you want to create for documentation to keep your document? So, I mean, to, uh, to document to document things about your project. Is it a knowledge base, like how to, how to set the network, how to change the bulb, how to cook soup, how to prepare this, how to, how to, how to, how to, how to plan for a trip? That's under knowledge base. And we have, if it's a software project space, so whatever type of space, don't forget where we started. Treat space as in something like a house with several items inside it. Or like a file cabinet that has layers and folders. And the folders, they have documents inside them. So usually when you start a new Confluence space, when you want to create a space, you usually have five. Originally, they should be six. The sixth one is your personal space. This personal space is the one that is after your name, just like the one you saw, Oludare. That's the sixth one. But once you already created your personal space, it will now be giving you this option of five extra additional spaces. You just select any one you want, if it is a software project, and then you click next, you call the name of that your space, and, and then you select the Jira instance. Don't forget, Jira is for issue and bug tracking, to track the work that needs to be done. Let's assume I go back, knowledge base. Knowledge base is the one that will show us, like I said, how to troubleshoot, how to do this, how to do that. That's what we put in knowledge base. And documentation, maybe your roadmap, your user guide, and stuff like that. And for your team, you have to create a team space. So when someone says to you, create a space for me in conference, don't just say, oh, I created it. No, ask, what type of space do you want created for you? 
Okay. Let's just create a blank space for the fun of it. Next, you call it the space. You call it the space name, and that becomes another space. Under the additional option, there is this concept of space key. Let's say we want to call this space a uh, team. Uh, let's say we want to call it um, team playground, or let's say we want to call it a uh, uh, project. Project X, Y, Z space. You can see here, it says, identify this with a space key. Once you create a project, you can't easily change this space key. And before you create it, you can amend it. You know, it gave me by default, P, X, project, and then the first word of X, Y, Z. But I can add to it. I can say P, X, one, two, three. This is the time you can change the key. Don't forget the key is a unique key that makes it unique in the system. So that another, if another person wants to create project XYZ, it will be telling you that exists already. Especially with the identification space code of PX123. And so create space. And so we've created, we've learned how to create a space. We've learned how to create pages inside the space. So we've done all the basic things that you need that can help you to navigate conference. We, if we look at, if we look at what we set out to achieve today, if we look at what we set out to achieve, uh, let me go back to the space where we have where we have our agenda earlier. Don't forget this practical training one. If I go to practical training which is the other space I created before. You know, I just created, I mean, on that site that I created before, you know, I just created this other one when I was showing us how to start from scratch. So we talked about Confluence. You've known what Confluence can do now to some point. It's a collaboration tool. It's a project repository. It's a content portal. It's a knowledge sharing where you can share. So let's demonstrate how you share. Let's demonstrate how you share space. So let's assume I want to share this page with a colleague. You see it up here. You know the pencil here we said is to edit this page. The next thing, this eye. If you click on this eye, it will tell you, do you want to be watching this page? If it's a very critical page, in the office that you won't, don't want anybody to go and mess up without you knowing. You will take, watch all content in this space. But the downside of it is that if somebody type comma or full stop and save, it will send you an alert that somebody type comma and full stop. Everything they do on this page, it will send you an alert, a notification. So that is, that's the downside of that. But you can do that for something very, very critical something very critical that you want to be watching that space. But now I can untick. If you don't want to watch the space at all, you untick both of them. That's what that is for. So that you can be notified. So that somebody will not go and delete your page without you knowing. That's what that managing the pages. Now we're talking about sharing. Assuming I want to share this page with a colleague, I click share, it's saying, enter the name of the person. And here now, I pick Oludare. 
You have other team members that have access to here, you would list their name. I pick Oludare and he's saying, is there any message? Hey. See the attached. Like I send. And Oludare, you see, straight away, see, notification gave me one notification now. If I click on it, what does it say? Uh, it's giving me uh, other different individuals. Sorry, let me skip. It's giving me other different individuals. Let me say only show on red. You see now, Ludare shared a page two, three seconds ago in project XYZ, which is this project XYZ. That is what this notification is all about. Okay, you can see it's no longer highlighted now because I've seen that notification. Okay, now if you want to invite somebody to your page, this is where you invite, you click on invite and you put the email. Like I said, Oludare at digitalbusiness.com and you select that, but it says because it's my own email. So something like that. Yeah, let's say I want to invite our support. I put support at digital business consult.com. And you can see at the moment I do that support. What do I do? I add one person. He's asking, what other thing do you want to add the person to? I want to add the same person to both my conference and my Jira. I can click both of them. You see, before you invite the person, he's asking, do you just want to invite him to conference or to conference and Jira? We will talk about Jira at a later date, but let's focus on conference first. I've ticked the two of them. And now what do I do? I add one person which is support a data business consult. And I click, and it will tell you that one person has been added to your space. You see now on the bottom left, we sent an email to support a data business consult, confirming you added them. So that is it guys. We have been able to look at different things on this segment, we'll be able to see the use of conference. We've done some practicals with it. We can consolidate information. We can document projects like I've shown us. We have worked on the concept of spaces. Space could be personal. That was the one you saw here. Oludare is a personal space. Space could be for team, just like this. Practical training is a team space, okay? You can navigate around, you see, navigate up and down. We've demonstrated that. Permissions, permissions. Let's look at permissions. Assuming I want this page, I don't want anybody to have access to this page, apart from me. That's under permissions. Make sure your cursor is on overview. Make sure your cursor is on overview, okay? Permission requires you to have a full license. With permission, you need full license to be able to, there are certain functionalities that you need to have full license, you know? Otherwise, if everything is free, I will at least end, how will they make their money? So there are times when they want you to have license before you can do certain things, okay? So we're talking about permissions. Put your cursor on overview. Then the page you want, you click on these three dotted lines. When you click, when your cursor is on overview, you click on these three dotted lines, you will now go to restriction. You see, we have option to copy. If I want to copy this page or to move this page or to export it to Word or to PDF, but we go to 
restriction. This is where we perform permissions. It's asking, what do I want to do? Do I want to restrict, restrict this page? There are three permission levels. One, as it is currently, anyone can view and edit. If I have something that is very, very sensitive, anybody can just come there and edit it and mess it up and go. That's the default setting. If I take the second option, anyone can view it, but only some, the people I get permission that can edit. The first one, anyone can view and edit. It's like an open door policy. But nobody expects you to keep something that is sensitive with that permission level. Well, guys, any one of you can view this document, but only those that are authorized can edit. That's the second one. And he's saying everybody can view now, but only Oludare can edit. That's the second line of defense. The third line says only specific view can even specific people can view or edit. So when I pick this, you see that, see here now, everyone can view. But assuming it is the latest formula for Coca-Cola, you know the formula for Coca-Cola, nobody knows it, except the secret people that know, know it all, all over the world. I mean, all over the years, it's only the people that know it, nobody knows it. So assuming it's, I'm working on another thing, very another intellectual property, another thing that is, I need to keep jealously. You won't leave it with anyone can view. Rather, you come and do only specific people can view or edit. When you click that, you can see it now says everyone has no access. Take notes. If you try to be a, a scrum master, a product owner, or you're working in, in, in sensitive place, permission is one thing you must know how to use effect, effect, effectively. Otherwise, you get to your job, to your very sensitive document, you see that somebody has messed it up because you did not activate permissions. So everybody, you guys, you have no access. This is top secret work. And you apply. Now you see a padlock. It means this. It means this um, page. This page. Everything about this, I blocked it. Because if I go to the restriction. If I go to the restriction, guys, it's loading. Let me cancel. Okay. You see now, everybody has no, you can see the red padlock. Only me have access. Okay. Let's go and look at uh, point again, what do we say we want to cover? Let's open this so that we see the cascaded. At times, when it's becoming sluggish, you refresh. So area to cover. So we have done quite a lot of what we wanted to do today. Navigation permissions, linking to other platforms, linking to other platforms. So what we will do, we will continue some of them so that we don't make this video too long we will continue the other segments but let me take one or two more things 
When you want to link to other platforms, you could do that. You could link to Jira. You could link to Jira through macros. But I could take that macros and we've already talked about templates. We've talked about creating spaces, deleting spaces. Let's see how you delete spaces before I go to linking to other platforms. Let's say you want to delete space. You delete space under space settings here. Let me go to the other one that we just created. If we go to project X here, let us want to use it because I don't want to delete the, the one that has our agenda, okay? Note, this is practical training, but there's another one that we just created for this experiment that is practical training one, okay? So that's two different spaces, guys. And so, let's say want to delete this space. Don't forget, space and page. You need to understand the difference. A space is like that house that has many items in it. A page is like an item inside that house. Okay. So I want to delete this space. You come to space settings. Space settings. You can see space details, edit, sidebar, and stuff but delete space, delete space. But don't forget this is irreversible. It permanently deletes it. So you don't just do this without, do you have to do it? If you don't have to do it, if it's not compulsory, you can archive it, which will be like in storage. Deleting a space is irreversible. But for the, this experiment, let's say I want to delete this space. You say, this is immediate and permanent. You won't be able to recover it. Yes, it's, there's no page. You can see no page in it. It's just a demo page. I say, yeah, delete. Because there's nothing in it. But if there's anything in it, if you do that, hmm, it's irreversible. Please take note. Yeah, space deleted. If I refresh that page now, it will tell me, I'm afraid, page not found. You can see. If I look at the spaces now, you can see it's only those my personal one and the one we created before. That space is gone. That space is gone. Let's go to one of the other spaces that is alive. So we've done another thing again in our agenda. We've been able to look at how do we delete space. We have created spaces where we look at the downward arrow here and we created spaces. That's how you create spaces and it could be very personal or uh, it could be personal or team space or blank space or project space, different type of spaces. Then the other thing is creating spaces, we have done that. Let me show us one more way of creating a space. Apart from when you click on spaces and you come to view all, uh, you can create a space like this, just create a space, it's the same thing. Or under view all spaces, under view all spaces, you can see create a space on the top right here. That's another way to create a space. So they're the same thing. Just another way of doing the same thing. Okay, let's go back to our agenda. What is next? We would Treat linking to other platforms. Linking to other platforms. How can I link to other platforms? So, if I come here now, let me go to practical training. Now, you know we created a Jira page, a Jira board, when we started today. So, let's assume I create a page that I want to link. I create this page. I want to link it to that Jira. It says give your page a title. Let's assume I, I want to give it 
linking to other platform. So let's say linking to yeah platform. Jira. Now, here is our Jira issues. Here's our Jira, here are our, our, our Jira issues. Sorry. Here are the Jira issues. Let's say this now. Now, So one way we can do it, let's assume you go and click this drop down. This drop down. These are all macros. Macros like system formulas that are automated that can do some things in the background for you. So let's say we type Jira. We click down on the downward arrow, we type Jira. You say embed Jira issues. Embed Jira issues into your status report or release note or requirement documentation. Let's assume I click on that. Don't forget, we're looking at embedding Jira issues. It's now telling me what issue do I want to embed? Let's say uh, what we typed that time when we, when we were in Jira, uh, we typed let me duplicate this page so that we can go and look for the name of our Jira issue, but I can't seem to remember it offhand. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Practical demo one. I go to Jira here now to see. Don't forget to switch between conference and Jira. To switch between the two of them, you click these nine dots and you can switch. So I'm going to Jira software. I duplicated my tab so that I can see the name of the yeah Manchester United FC. Let's create something quickly under Manchester United FC so that I can make, make sense what we're trying to do. Don't worry, you are not in Jira yet, but I mean, like I need it to demonstrate that area. So it said create an issue. Let's create an issue. Let's say the issue is registration. Enter. We created an issue. Let's create another issue. Login. Enter. We will populate this later on because we're not dealing with Jira today. So we won't bother. Let's say registration and login. Let me now go here. So we want to bring that registration. We want to bring that registration. Registration. Search. Can you see? It has brought the Manchester United registration that is here. That is here. This is Jira, Jira software. It has brought it inside our conference. So if I say insert, can you see, guys? It has brought my Manchester United whatever if i go back to that jira now that manchester united registration if i add a child issue to it that is like a baby page to it and i call it clear the field as Manchester United, clear the field. And I say, insert the goal post, or uh, insert new goal post, like great. You can see the status is something to do. Under statuses, 
you have in progress and done. Don't forget we said this is a board. This is a board. You can see now. This Manchester, I moved it to in progress from to do. And I even created, I moved it from in progress to, I mean, from to do to in progress. Let's go to our conference. You know, the status is to do. But now let's refresh and see. Refresh. Let's publish. Publish is to save, don't forget. Let's refresh now, guys. Don't forget the status in the other tab. It is no longer to do, it's now in progress. But let's refresh now and see. This is conference. I picked something from Jira, I've embedded it through linking to other platform. Refresh. And watch this place, guys. Watch the status here. When I refresh. Can you see? That's how you can know the status of work of your colleague straight away from conference here. Work that he did or that they are doing or that to, to do in Jira. I'm linking it to other platform. This is just an example. If I want to bring another another issue, login, let's say the second one, which is the login. I come in here to edit. I come in here to edit. I want to bring in another another issue. I click on the downward, whatever, Jira, embed Jira, instead of registration, login, and I search. Don't forget, if you come and look at it here, this is this one, login. There are two tabs that are open so that you don't get confused, guys. When I search, you can see login, and I say insert. I see. I have another, and so on and on like that. On and on like that. I am bringing, I'm embedding something from Jira into conference. I'm embedding something from Jira into conference. Okay. Now, we've done that capability to, so let's publish, let's publish. You see now we have, what we have in Jira, we have linked it to our conference. So we've talked about permission, linking to other platforms, creating spaces, deleting spaces, Creating and editing pages, that's what we've been doing since when we we're creating all this product launch, linking to other platform, they are all creating pages. That's how they create pages. Create another new page, that is creating pages. As many pages you want. You are all creating these pages inside a space. Inside a space. You are creating that page, so it depends on what you want to create now. Let's say I want to create something for capacity planning. And I just see capacity planning straight away. And I click on it. And I give it the title. That's how you create a page. Whatever thing you want, look for the template, whether the template exists, so that it will save you time instead of repeating, brainstorming, I mean, warning yourself for something that the, the this thing already exists, capacity planning and publish. You see capacity planning. If I'm a Scrum Master, I want to know the capacity of my team. Capacity planning is crucial. It's crucial with, with an agile team. 
the name of the team and the name of the member, the task they are to do, the hour they need to do the work, percentage of their hours, so that I might be able to, maybe I have 40 hours to spend in the, in the week, I may have 10 hours to this project, 10 hours dedicated to this project, 10 hours to dedicated to, to, to this project, and that's how it goes, guys. Okay. And then, you look at the sum total. That's how you have capacity planning. Okay, what do we have next? We've done our space settings. The space settings. That's what we, we see when we go here. If, for instance, I want to change this practical demo, I mean, practical training demo one, I can't change it. I can't change it from here. I will need to go to space settings. You click on space setting. Don't forget that was where we deleted what we deleted that time. Under space setting, you can see space details. You can click on space detail. That's where you can change the name of this space from practical training demo. This is where you can change the name. If I want to change the name from practical de training demo one, I'll say edit space details. Ed edit space details. And here now, I can say practical training demo one. Maybe I want to call it practical training one demo. Instead of training one demo, I want to call it practical training demo one. Demo one. Instead of one demo, I'm calling it demo one. And demo one is not demo one. You can see it now, it has changed. That's where we change the name of a space. And then the sidebar, the sidebar, when you want to edit the sidebar that are here, you click in that space setting, you click on edit space bar. If I don't want to be seeing the blog, maybe because, or I, I don't need it, you can see they are grayed out. But if I want to be seeing it, I can take it now. You can see blog has now appeared. If I want to see overview, I click on overview. Can you see overview? It's now here now. If I want to archive a space, that is to hide it from everybody's view, you go to archive space. If I want to delete a space like the one we did previously. If I want to export a space, that is, I have a complete confluence space. I want to export it to another confluence. That's how you do that. Okay, guys. Let's see. And then don't forget, when you've done this, Let's go look, look at what is next. Creating and edit, editing pages, we've done that. Space settings, we have looked at our space settings. Templates, we have looked at our templates. Macros, we have even looked at our macros. Then integration with other tools and space and global settings. Let's do those two and then we close. Macros, our macros, this is Jira. Let's go to Confluence. Confluence. I go to the team space. You must know where are you trying to work? Are you trying to work in the team space or your personal space? That's very crucial, guys. Take notes. On the practical demo one, If I want to do, I create a page, let's say the page is for our macros, macros. And I enter. You see the drop down here? 
These are macros. What do I want? Say, do I want to insert a date using calendar? If I click on it, you see now, I've inserted a calendar straight away. I've inserted a calendar. If I want it to be tomorrow's date, that's a macro. Let's insert another macro. What do we want? If we want status, so that what's the status that I want to set? Maybe to do, to do. What color do we want it to be? This color. Or this color. You enter. You can see. That task is to do. That's a status. If I want to insert another macro, maybe table of content, it will automatically pull all the things you have, the chapters, the pages, and stuff like that for you. If you want to insert, I'm just inserting different macros just for you to see. It depends on what you need. If you want to view more, you click view more. You will now see that there are so many macros. You can see. It depends on what you want. So basically, it depends on what you need. It, de it depends on what you really need here. Okay. Maybe I want to display a chart. You click that chart, you insert. And it's asking, what type of chart? Is it pie chart? So it depends if you, that is if you need it. Don't just say insert macro when you don't need one. You, you can look at them by content heading. Is it visual and images to one like charts, like navigation, maybe a page tree, a page tree, a page tree, Let's see page three, you insert. Page three will give us everything about the page. Let's publish. Then you see it now. The macros we have launched. Just see the one for dates. See the one for dates. See the one for to do. The, see the one for the one for if you click on the pencil you go on it again, go to reporting, navigation, the page tree. See the page tree. That page tree is here and see it in reality, the page tree. Like the name implies, everything on your page, all these things, overview, blog, you will see page tree cascade everything for you, you see. Template, which is here. Template error, documentation. Get the most out of this. You can see it here. 
product launch, you can see it here. So a page tree, you know, these are the pages. It gives you like a content page of all your pages, you can see it here. Okay. I think that's the last thing on our page. Integration with other tools and space settings. Let's assume you want to integrate Confluence with other tools. You want to integrate Confluence with other tools. You see it under apps here, under apps. Do you want to link it with your Slack, with your Google Drive, with your Lucid Chats, or find new apps, whatever you want to link it to? That is integration. Integration. Different things. It depends on what you need. Do you want to connect to Gliffy? Gliffy is what we use to draw diagrams. Do you want to connect it to Gliffy? Do you want to connect it to Gliffy or draw.io? But some of them are not free. If you proceed, your free trial starts today and will end April this. The estimate is customized for your monthly plan of one to 10 at zero per user per month. So assuming you want to connect, so you make sure you find out the pricing so that you don't go and incur on S3. So these are, let's assume .io, I want to embed it. Let's say how to embed it. Is a, it's a diagram and whiteboard, and you can see it's integrating from Confluence to draw.io. Draw.io is what we use to make diagrams. It's what you use to make diagrams, guys. In draw.io, you use it to make diagrams. If I click on it now, so that you see draw.io in case you don't know about it. Draw.io is what, I mean, you want to draw diagrams, you use draw.io for flow, flow chart maker, online diagrams. Let's say you want to create a new diagram and the user is direct or lower framing. And let's say untitled, let's say a blank diagram, just for the fun of it, for those that don't know. Yeah, just go. Nowadays, you don't need to be an architect to be able to draw. There are so many things. A lot of them are drag and drop, drag and drop. So we have integrated Confluence to draw.io. And you can see draw.io. Let's assume how to make a flow chart. I mean, uh, these are just general shapes. You are looking at a process flow. You are looking at the process flow. You start, you go on to the next activity, you go on to the next activity, and then you take a decision tree, yes or no, you come in back here, let us zoom out to make it smaller. This is a decision, this is a, a process flow diagram, and I decide to get 
some information. I want to add some information. Standard operating procedure. And for you to link them together, you just click on the edge here. You see the arrow? Click on the edge here. Put your cursor there. Click on the edge here. And here, because it's a decision tree, yes or no? Here. Goes on to a cycle here. Go on to a process here. You can move it around. You can move this around. And here, you want to join this here. And then you want this to come to a final conclusion here, where you want it to end. So let's assume you want it to end here. So basically, guys, these are how you can connect all these things together. See this diagram I just drawn now. From this place, if I look at my apps now, inside Confluence, you see now apps, draw.io, app embedded draw.io into Confluence. That's system integration. So that from Confluence, I don't need to go out like I did to go and click outside here. From Confluence, I just click on my draw.io here, and it will take me straight into draw.io. And you say no diagram found uh, because I won't save no diagram there, or you can see I've embedded this. So th those are some of the uses of Confluence. Because you are new, if you are looking at it, if you are new candidates, I don't want to take too much today. And you can save. So that's it for our topics we've covered, integrating with other tools. I've just shown that. Space and global settings. I think that's the final thing. That when you are under space settings, you can see space permission. Space permission. If you click on space permission, Yeah, he's saying I need to try. He needs full license for this. So let me go to the one that has full license. Let's say this one that has full license. If I want to go to space setting, and I want to look at space permission under space setting, you see now this one has full license. This is where you can determine what each user can do. If ordinary user, do you want them to be able to view all pages? I don't want ordinary user to be able to view all pages. And let me show us what I mean by that. Let me duplicate this so that you can see. Any user can come and go to spaces and say view all spaces. And when the person is not Oludare, he will still be able to see Oludare displayed. But when you come to permission, and I say, I don't want users to be able to view all pages, I'll edit permission. 
But here, yeah, you must know what you are doing, guys, please. I untick all pages. So it's only pages that that person creates. You won't be able to see my personal page, for instance. Do I want him to be able to delete attachment? Do I want them to be able to delete space or export space? If I don't want them to be able to export space. So all those things are settings. If I don't want him to be able to export space, him or her, I will untick like this. That's if you want to export the space to another place. And don't forget to save. This is for someone that is having admin capability. So you don't need to go here if you don't have, if you don't want to, if you don't have administrative rights, you won't be able to do all this. And you can now save. And so, if I go back to our spaces, and I'm looking at what remains. in a tutorial that has not been covered. This is just intro, but we've covered quite a lot of areas that if you are able to do those navigation, you'll be able to create your space, delete your space, create and edit new spaces, uh, create pages, do space settings, make use of templates, link to other platforms, set permissions, navigations, project documentations. If you know all those things, you have known, known quite a lot. And integrating with other tools. So we'll, we'll draw the cutting on this today. Don't forget, if I create a page now, to show us how to attach documents. How to attach documents. I think when you saw the, let's say we call it here, attachments. I'm coming to the next slide. Where you are doing add image folder or file. That's where you can attach documents. So you click on the same place, just like we did before. You know, we attached the car image and everything. Today I did, I mean, uh, I did a free product management training. So I could decide to say, oh, let me attach this image or attach this document. You can attach any document. Not only images alone, you may attach a complete document. Anything, you see, it has brought it in. It has brought it here now. What do you think? When you are gauging the thoughts of your customer, their feelings, their emotions, when you are doing product development. So I'm just showing that under this picture, that's where you can attach things as well. And don't forget to publish. And when you are searching for something, this is where you can search for that thing that you're looking for. So you, you publish attachments like this. So we've covered, and if you are, you are lost, 
at any point, you need help. You click on that help for notification. You click on that notification. If you are receiving too many notifications, then if you are receiving too many not too many alerts, then it means you need to go to certain pages and go and stop watching. Click stop watching, you untick this so that you won't be able to watch that page any longer. And don't forget, this is to restrict a page. If I turn it to key padlock, it will lock that page. And this is to share with people. And this is to invite team members. Like invite people to conference. I can be able to invite others. I just put the email and I click add. And on that, these three dots, I can copy this page, I can move it, I can export it, I can see history. Assuming I want to see what has happened, who has changed what. If I click on page history, it will tell me who did what. It said there was a current version a minute ago. Like this area to cover. If I click on the three dots and I go to page history, you can see on 24th of March, there was a version one. Every time you save, system creates one version. And then version two, and then version three. So that in case you want to track who actually did something, who caused this damage, system will give you the data footprint. So thank you everyone. We basically covered everything we laid out to do here. And in recap, conference is a very robust tool. By the time you go through all the exercises I did, pause the video, try it on your own, Pause the video, try it on your own. You will see that you and your team, you become more productive. You'll be able to say that, oh yes, I can use this tool now. This is just an introduction. There are other things that we can do with this tool, which we'll be addressing in future videos. And then the next video will go into Jira so that we can show you how to navigate Jira how to create epics, user story, and tasks, how to populate them, and stuff like that. So, but this is to give you the basic knowledge you need to be able to use Confluence, which is a collaboration tool, which is a project repository, is a content portal for knowledge sharing, for consolidating information, for, for your permission, for your navigation, for creating personal and team spaces, for creating or deleting spaces, editing pages, your space settings, your macros, your templates, and integrating with other tools. So we've covered quite a, a great deal today. Thank you very much, everyone. Once again, as I leave, I want us to know that all this comes to us from Data Careers Academy, uh, a subsidiary of Data Business Consult, we provide data trainings and hands on experience to candidates. If you want to accelerate your data career, uh, feel free to, to talk to us. Um, our services include data protection, like we said, product management and delivery. We, using Agile framework, we deliver products for, for clients. We involve in, in, in cloud and resource consultancy, and we render career skills coach, coaching and mentoring and data for, uh, transformation 
activities. And so those are things we do. We have our clients uh, who say great things about us. And you can always reach us. We have at the, at the, at the base of our website, you can see information to reach us at info at data business consult with K, consult with K. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Happy learning. Uh, continue what you got to do and wish you all the best as you put all this to practice. Room was not built in a day, but the more you are putting this to practice, you learn how to use these tools. So when you get to an interview, don't forget our mission is to support as many people as possible, develop data skills that will help them to ace interviews and get high paying jobs that will lift their family uh, into a, a better place in life. That's our mission and that's what we do. And like we said, we are a digital consultancy to provide different forms of training. So feel free to check out our website and to see our courses, Digital Business Consult, Consult with K. Thank you and good night. God bless. Thank you.